Hello guys, I hope everyone is fine. In today's video, we will be discussing about uh, how to calculate complexity. To calculate complexity. Now, uh, the cal complexity calculation involves uh, various statements like uh, we have any uh, for loop or if statement or maybe while loop for that matter. So we have to find out how much time, how much, what is complexity actually? It is how much uh, maximum time a code is taking. to solve a problem. So that's what we have to do. Uh, we have to actually find the maximum intent, a uh, maximum extent to which the code can actually run. So that's what uh, the code complexity is all about. And that's why how, that's how it is going to be calculated. We talk about very first statement, uh, which is I have written main. This is my very first problem main is written and i'm writing c out okay and i want to calculate the complexity of this code clearly this code is this statement is written only one time the complexity would be order of one clearly it would be order of one let's say that i instead of that i write uh, c out by now I have written how many statements, two statements. Again, this will also cover order of one. This will also cover of order one. Although it is answer is order of two. But when we are uh, representing any any constant time complexity, we always write it as order of one. This is one particular example that I wanted to tell you. The second example we will take is uh, this part, which is we are writing main. And in the in the main, uh, we are writing a uh, for statement. I'm writing for i is equal to one, i is less than let's say equal to n i plus plus, and I'm writing c out. Okay. Now I want to calculate the complexity of this code. Firstly, you might be wondering that I have not written any uh, brackets over here, any brackets over here. That means that by default the statement written the first statement written is the statement inside it inside this particular for loop so it means from one i one i is equal to one i is less than equal to n i plus plus the first statement written after any for statement is the statement inside it so it means we have to find out the extent of this for loop as this for loop says it is going to run from 1 to n and is a variable and n times this ok is printed till n is less than till n is equal to n till the last statement this is going to print ok so it means it is going to print ok how many times n times so the complexity would be order of so this is uh, the second uh, example that I can tell you. The third example is, let's say uh, I'm writing uh, for i is equal to zero, i is less than, let's say, n i plus plus, and I'm writing c out hello, and another statement is c out okay. Now, how many times this hello and okay are going to print? Firstly, this statement is under this for loop. So i is equal to 0, 0 is less than n, 0 plus plus and it's just going to display hello. So it is going to run how many times? Obviously, it will run n times. So complexity of this code would be n and OK will be printed one time. The complexity would be order of n plus 1, but we have to take uh, the maximum term out of it. It means 1 compared with n is having no use. Uh, so by default, the com constant time complexity won't exist. The so complexity would be order of n. This is another example. Uh, let's take another example. Let's take for loop inside for loop. I'm writing for 
and I'm writing i is equal to zero. I is less than n i plus plus, right? Uh, I'm writing another for loop for uh, j is equal to zero. J is less than n j plus plus, and for k is equal to zero. K is less than n k plus plus, and I'm writing one statement which is c out fine. Now, this is a case of nested for loops. This for loop is under this for loop. This for loop is under this for loop. And this statement is under this for loop. It means it should run from i 0 to n. Fine. Firstly, we will check i is equal to 0. 0 is less than n condition true. Right. Then we will go inside this for loop where we have another statement. J is equal to 0. 0 is less than n. It means we have to execute this also. And this condition if it is true we go inside this for loop k k is equal to 0 k is less than n till the time k is less than n it will display fine so obviously this statement will complete after that we have to run this statement again we will come inside this statement so the point over here is it this uh, for loop which is a nested for loop this is actually running uh, n times of this n multiplied by this n means this is going to run n times. This is obviously going to run n times and this is running n times. So basically we are running n times i of n times j of n times k. The complexity would be order of n cube. Had we been, uh, had we been writing, so answer would be order of n cube. So I'm changing some parts in this question. Had I been writing in this way that uh, we got uh, n uh, i is less than like this question. So what would be the complexity? The complexity of this question would be obviously this is going to run n times. n times it is running of this is running n square times and this is running n cube times. The order would be order of n multiplied by n square multiplied by n cube. The answer would be order of n6. But the major note that you should note is complexities get multiplied only if we have different variables. What do you mean by this? I, J and K all are different variables guys. If they are different variables, the complexity will get multiplied else it won't. This is another kind of uh, question that we all should know. Right. The similar kind of question I am writing in in the next example. The next example says I have to calculate the complexity of this code where we have for i is equal to zero, i is less than n i plus plus for j is equal to zero, j is less than n square j plus plus and uh, I'm writing a similar variable actually. I'll write i instead of j. i is equal to 0. i is less than n square i plus plus. And for i is equal to 0, i is less than n cube i plus plus. And I'm writing c out ok. Now guys, what happened in this particular scenario? What happens actually in this scenario? We have i is equal to 0, 0 is less than n, so it is definitely going to run. Let's say n value is 6 for that matter, right? So that would mean that would mean that uh, it will run till 6. Now, if n value is 6, n square becomes 36. Again, it will run 0, 0 is less than 6, condition true. It will come inside this for loop. 0, 0 is less than 36. It will come inside this for loop. 
Now i is less than n cube. Six multiplied by six multiplied by six is two one six. I suppose. So zero zero is less than two one six. The condition is definitely true. It will work till two uh, two one six times, and it will display okay. So it means again. Then i plus plus comes again. It will come over here. I is equal to one. One is less than two one six. It will print okay. So it means it is printing okay two one six times. The moment uh, it goes out of it, and i value becomes two one seven, right? So over here it comes over here with two one six two one seven. Less than thirty six. It is not possible. This condition never runs. So it means it is working only one time. Similarly, two one seven when comes over here, two one seven cannot be less than six. So this is also not working. This worked for one time with the very first part. This worked for one time with this very first part, and this is working obviously two one six times. So, and it is actually if I take it in a variable of n cube, it is working n cube times the complexity would be order of n cube multiplied by one multiplied by one order of n cube. This is a takeaway since I told you. That in the previous example, complexities get multiplied only if we have different variables. We had different variables i, j, and k. Do we say that we have the same for this particular i? We don't. Over here, we had. Over here, we can easily write we had a variable. Only variable i was used. So. i value is incremented it is incremented to n cube which cannot be less than n square cannot be less than n so hence the complexity would be order of n cube fine so this is uh, another kind of scenario uh, if there is any doubt you can always ask me these are the six or seven questions that we have done uh so kindly support us in our uh, campaign if there are any kind of doubts put it on comment section kindly like share and subscribe thank you very very much